Hello and welcome to Wisdom Trek. This is Guthrie Chamberlain and I'm your guide to wisdom and creating a living legacy. Thank you for joining us for our seven day a week, seven minutes of wisdom podcast. This is day 92 of our trek and today we will continue our trek as we consider what it means to hike with the limp. We are recording our podcast from our studios at the Big House in Marietta, Ohio. Our mower, which has been in the shop for the past three weeks, was returned on Saturday morning. And while I was able to get some of the woodwork in our formal dining room strip, since it was such a nice day out, I spent several hours mowing. We have not had much rain in Ohio for the past month, so the grass was not too far out of hand. But there were some areas that had become quite long after a month of not being able to mow. It was great just to get outside and enjoy my time there. Yesterday, we looked at the story of Jacob when he wrestled with God and his name was changed to Israel. Although God's original call to start a new nation was with Jacob's grandfather Abraham, with Jacob, who is now Israel, the new nation started to take shape. If you missed the story of Jacob's wrestling match, please listen to Day 91 on iTunes or at wisdom-trek.com to get caught up. This wrestling match left Jacob with a limp that he would be inflicted with the remainder of his life as a reminder to be set apart and to prepare for and build this new nation. As we start out to explore our new trails for today, we realize that it will be very difficult to take a strenuous hike with a permanent limp or other disability, so we'd have to be prepared for our journey. Preparation can come in many forms, but for our trek today, let's take our rehabilitation instructions from Hebrew chapters 12, and we'll look at verses 1 through 3 and verse 12 and 13. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to this life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sins that so easily trips us up, and let us run with endurance the race that God has set before us. We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion and initiator that perfects our faith. Because of the joy awaiting him, he endured the cross, disregarding its shame. Now he is seated in a place of honor beside God's throne. Think of all the hostility that he endured from sinful people, then you won't become weary and give up. So take a new grip with your tired hands and strengthen your weak knees. Mark out a straight path for your feet, so that those who are weak and lame will not fall, but become strong. From this passage, we see that in order to learn and adapt to our limps in life, then we need training and discipline. This does not mean that we will completely recover from our limp or be without pain, but it does mean that we will learn to live with both and still live a rich and satisfying life that Jesus promised us. So let's start on our hike today with the new trails. Trail number two, are we prepared? Our culture does little to prepare or equip us for the hard things of life. We live in a culture designed to maximize our comfort and pleasure, celebrate these vanities, and distract us from what is real and lasting. If we take a look at what we're being sold in the media, we should expect life to be easy as possible filled with things that entertain and delight us, that ensure that we will live a hassle-free life. From this perspective, pain is something to be avoided or ignored as much as possible. In reality, however, it is not how people actually live. We may be cushioned from the impacts of suffering and pain for long periods in our life, but inevitably we will be forced to come face-to-face with the harsh and often crushing realities of real and avoidable heartbreak. God may not allow us to become too comfortable. He knows that many of us will turn from Him if we become too comfortable, which isn't good for us. Martin Luther, the 16th century Protestant reformer, encourages us that going through the trials and temptations can be a blessing when they undermine our pride and our reliance on ourselves and teach us to put our trust in God's mercy and goodness. So where do we go to learn how to wrestle with life's challenges well? How do we equip ourselves to face and deal with life's pain and suffering in a way that enables us to retain our sense of dignity and our faith in God, where eventually we can emerge from the valley of the shadow of death in good shape? How do we prepare ourselves to be able to do this when our hearts, our minds, spirits, and bodies are crushed under the weight of pain and suffering that can sweep into our lives without warning? We must look to the place of hope and truth ahead of time. Our trail number three is to build well. We need a preemptive strategy. When you visit the ancient towns and cities, particularly in Europe and the Middle East, you will often see large and fortified city walls protectively surrounding the area. These were an essential piece of fortification and safety for these cities and their people during the times when they were under siege. What we often fail to consider is that these walls were built during the times of peace, when life was good. We need to build well when our life is good. This is the time that we invest in our key relationships with God and others. This is the time to dig deeply into prayer, worship, and scripture. It is here that we find examples from Jesus and his disciples and others in scriptures of suffering and wrestling in ways that bring hope and life that are firmly anchored in the goodness of God. 
When life is good, that is the time to cultivate these life-giving habits that will sustain us when we are stretched. We must anchor ourselves in truly believing that God is good and that He does love us. Then, when we are in the thick of things and life is just plain tough, there are a few things that can help us. And trail number four, it is only for a season. God knows that we need constant reminders of His goodness and involvement in our lives. So He has given us many in Scripture and in the way that He has orchestrated the rhythms of nature and history. I have found that Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verses 1 through 8 is extremely encouraging. We are told that all things in life have a season. They don't last forever. Such as verse 4 where he says, There is a time to cry and a time to laugh, a time to grieve and a time to dance. Nature reminds us of this truth also. We would not experience the bursting of life in spring without the seemingly lifeless winter season. No matter how long a season of suffering can feel, or indeed is, this season will pass. So far we've explored the trails of perspective, planning, building, and seasons. So come along on our hike tomorrow for another day of Wisdom Trek, Creating a Legacy. Tomorrow we will continue to learn how to hike with a limp, realizing that we do have choices and we are not alone on this trek of life. Well, that will finish our podcast for today. If you've missed any of the previous podcasts, please check out Wisdom Trek on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Spreaker, YouTube, or at wisdom-trek.com. If you enjoy our daily doses of wisdom, these little nuggets we consume each day, I encourage you to take the time to invest in yourself in these three ways. Invest with your time in improving Wisdom Trek by leaving your name, email address, and a comment on our website so that we can provide you with the wisdom and insights that best fit your needs. Number two, invest in yourself by listening to your seven minutes of wisdom through the Wisdom Trek podcast each day. And the best way to do this is to subscribe at iTunes or Stitcher and have it downloaded to you automatically. And third, invest in the lives of others by sharing with your family and friends in person or online to journey with us on our Wisdom Trek. And if you haven't done so already, please leave us a rating at iTunes or Stitcher so that we'll gain more exposure for others to join us on our Wisdom Trek. The journal for this podcast can be found at wisdom-trek.com where we also have pictures, tweetable quotes, wisdom nuggets, and free resources. Thank you for allowing me to be your guide, mentor, but most importantly, your friend, as I serve you through the Wisdom Trek podcast and journal each day. As we take this trek together, let us always live abundantly or fully, love unconditionally, listen intentionally, learn continuously, lend to others generously, lead with integrity, and leave a living legacy each day. This is Guthrie Chamberlain reminding you to keep moving forward, enjoy your journey, and create a great day every day. See you tomorrow.